In this video, I want to cover the basics of how you do consolidation worksheet entries when one of the companies has sold a depreciable asset to another company. This is somewhat similar to what we did in class where one company sold a piece of land to another company, but this gets a little more complicated because of the depreciation involved, that when one company sells to another company, typically changes the depreciation schedule, which then makes depreciation screwed up, and we have to figure out what the screw up is, go in and fix it. So let's look at the simple example I've set up. On the first day of 2011, parent sells a building to sub for $200,000. The building had an original cost of one hundred fifty, dollars and so far the parent has done $30,000 of depreciation as of January 1st. The parent was depreciating the building at $10,000 per year up to that point. So the new company, the sub, buys the building for $200,000. Because of that, it's going to do a higher depreciation rate. So for simplicity, let's assume it's doing $14,000 per year. So what would the parent be reporting from this sale? Did they have a gain or a loss on the sale? Well, recall from other accounting classes that to figure that out, you compare the selling price of the building of $200,000 to its book value. The book value is the original cost of $150,000 minus the $30,000 that's already been recovered. So 150 minus 30 means the book value is 120. They sold it for 200. So the parent would be reporting a gain of $80,000. So we show up to do the consolidation. Our worksheet entries will need to do three things. One, we will need to reverse that $80,000 gain that the parent is reporting because that, from our viewpoint, was not a sale to an external party, so they cannot report the gain on a consolidated income statement. Number two, the sub is showing the building at 200000 but on a consolidated balance sheet, we need to get that reset back to the original group's purchase price of one hundred fifty. A second entry we'll use to fix the depreciation. The sub, from our viewpoint, is doing too much depreciation expense because they're doing 14000 per year when we want it to only be 10000 per year. When I was first learning this, I finally figured out that what would be very helpful to me is if I set up T accounts for all of this information rather than trying to hold it in my head. Okay, so here's a bunch of T accounts. I'm going to let the three at the top of the screen represent the parent's T accounts. And there I want to record how would things look if the parent had not sold the building to the sub. The bottom three will represent the subsidiary's accounting records as it currently shows a building that they've purchased. So if the parent had never sold the building, the top building account would have a balance, a debit balance of 150. Problem said that as of the first day of the year, they had done 30,000 of accumulated depreciation, and they do 10,000 a year depreciation expense. So at this point, this is the beginning of the year, this 30, and 10 is the current year. The parent is also at this point reporting a gain on the sale of 80,000. All right, but they did sell it. So the building, the sub thinks. And this is what they would be showing in their accounting records. They would show the building at 200. As of the first day of the year, they would not have done any depreciation yet. But during the year, they would do 14. So when we show up to do the consolidation, we want to reset the T accounts so they reflect what the parent would be showing if they had never sold the building versus the bottom T accounts, which is what the sub is currently showing. So look at that. We're going to need to reduce the building account. So we're going to need a credit. We're going to increase accumulated depreciation from 0 to 30, and we need to reduce depreciation expense from 14 down to 10, and we need to get rid of that sale. So the first consolidation entry that the authors call TA will do that. The purpose of that one will be to deal with the gain, get the building account reset to its correct amount, fix accumulated depreciation as at the beginning of the year. We're going to do a separate entry that the authors call ED for excess depreciation to deal with the fact that the sub is doing, from our standpoint, too much depreciation.
One of the nice things about that second entry, ED, is that entry will be the same every year going forward for as long as they are depreciating this building. What is going to change, though, every year is that TA entry. So we need to talk about how the numbers and the accounts are going to change in the first year after the transfer. The best way to make sense of that is to go back to the T accounts. So let's think, how would things have changed one year later? If the parent had never sold the building, they would still show the building at 150, but they would have done another year's depreciation, so accumulated depreciation would have climbed from 30 up to 40. They would do another 10,000 depreciation expense that year. Would they still be showing this gain on sale? No, that would now be closed. The previous year they would have closed it to retained earnings. But again, we don't think that gain should have happened yet. So from our viewpoint now, retained earnings is overstated by 80 because of that gain. When we show up a year later, the sub would still be showing the building at 200. Now though, accumulated depreciation would not be zero. They would be showing it at 14 because they were doing 14,000 of depreciation per year. Their current year's depreciation would still be 14. But what would be the effect on, on their retained earnings? Right? They put 4,000 too much depreciation in that would have been closed out to retained earnings. So the net effect on retained earnings, and this is the key, the net effect is it's overstated by 76. So we need to fix that. Let's pause and see what changed in the TA entry from the first year, which was the year of the intercompany sale, to the next year. Instead of debiting gain, I'm now debiting retained earnings, and the number is slightly different. The number changed from 80 to 76. That's a change of $4,000. That change exactly equals the amount of the ED entry. And again, it's not coincidence. Look back at the T accounts and you'll see the retained earnings is overstated by 80 for the gain, but then it came back a little bit because depreciation expense was overstated by 4. Expense and gains are opposites, so the net effect is retained earnings overstated by 76 as of the beginning of the year. The building credit did not change. It's always going to be 50 because we always need to reset the building from 200 back to 150. The accumulated depreciation number did change though, as that difference in depreciation is going to keep going year after year. We're going to have to take that into account. Notice it changed from 30 to 26, changed by exactly 4, which is the amount of over depreciation expense. So when we come back in the year 2013, it's going to change by another 4. It'll drop from 26 to 22. So back to my T accounts. Let's say another year goes by. How would these change? The building accounts don't change. What would change is accumulated appreciation. Instead of 40, the parent would have 50. Again, the top ones are if the parent had never sold the building. Accumulated appreciation would have grown to 50. But they did sell the building. The sub, how would that change? They would have done another year's de depreciation. So this would change to be 28. 14 would be the current year's depreciation, so that's fine. But over here, what would have happened? Another 4,000 of too much expense bringing the net now to 72. So retained earnings overstated by 72. So now I gotta fix this. And there you have it. It would keep going on year after year. Try to work through this problem again on your own. Once you think you've got it mastered, try problem 23 in the book is very good. Problem 24 in the book is very good.